Adam Savage here in a warehouse full of movie props, literally. Prop store, Brandon Allinger, thank you guys so much for inviting me to your palace. <laughs> thank you. It's just like, I, I walk around and we talk and then I just sort of wander away and wander down the aisles. Um, we do have a lot of props here, yes. I, and the ones in crates tend to be a lot of fun. If it's in a crate, you know it's something a little bit special. Oh, really? That's, yeah, that's no, a good I, I think that's a good, that's a good uh, rule. Yeah, a good rule of thumb is crates equals Something cool. Something chunky and mm -hmm. yummy. All right, so this just came out of a crate and it's clearly an architectural model. Um, what film is this from? So this is Evil Dead 2. No! Yeah, and this is, you know, we love when things turn up from the 70s, from the 80s, the early 90s, this sort of older content, especially things that haven't been seen before. So yeah. it's one thing when a piece is coming from another collector, because odds are a lot of the other hardcore collectors are aware that that collector had it, it's sort sure. of been seen. So there's like a set pool of content that everybody's aware of, and then every now and then a little light goes off on the radar and something new shows up. <laughs> That's very fun for us. Like and when you get a is, phone call like this, this is one of those those pieces and it came from a guy who was part of the visual effects crew. He recognized that it was a special thing and it should be saved. And he's had it in his garage for more than 30 years. Wow. Um, I'm looking at its construction, which seems fairly basic. I'm like some pieces of veneer and some balsa. The roofing is all patterned copper. Can't tell if they did the patterning, them, patterning themselves, but uh, it looks just perfect functionally. Yeah, and it's, you know, a lot of the models that we would handle would be more like spaceships or aircraft or something like that. Yeah. So like you say, architectural is the word. It's interesting as a collectible, but obviously this is a key setting, a key piece that plays quite a lot in, in the film, right? Well, so this isn't a maquette. This is actually a shooting miniature. Yeah, as I understand ah. it, this is a shooting miniature specifically for uh, shots and sequences where the trees are all coming down and, and that sort of thing. So, oh, wow. Yeah. That yeah. is so cool. This is also like one of my favorite kinds of models to build. There's something about like gluing slats on a dollhouse kind of thing <laughs> that uh, just instantly makes you feel like you're about 12 years old. Right, very traditional in a way, I guess. Yeah. Oh man, I'm looking through the door and I know the interior isn't dressed, but it still looks recognizably creepy as like right from Evil Dead. Yeah, I don't know if what sort of functionality it has. I mean, I can see there's still some wiring inside of it. So maybe they had some sort of lighting effects rigged at some point. Oh yeah. What or is pyro? It? That's yeah. the kind of wire I'd use for pyro. Okay. Maybe you're right. Maybe the yeah. smoke effect, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it actually the wiring goes into it looks like it goes into the door. Oh no, it just terminates. Oh yeah, there's something coming out here. Oh yeah, there you go, oh, there's there, a lamp. Okay, okay. A lamp. Yeah. Oh man. Little door light. I love how they faked the log cabin look by gluing these right, circles Right, the ends here. of the posts. Yeah. 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 And this is real copper, huh? Yeah, now you can see it here on yeah. the edges. It's real copper and I don't know, it's, I mean, it's just a fabulous looking roof. And there's nothing like real metal. Yeah. You know, you could use you could do this with styrene. It would take twice as long. Uh -huh. Real metal just gives you all these great efficiencies. Right. I like the, the way it's sort of dense, and mm -hmm. you get those textures to it and such. Yeah, and I mean, on the extreme end, you've got things like the uh, Mission Impossible helicopter crash, where the helicopter has been plated uh -huh. and the plastic removed, so that the plating dents like it's made of real metal right. chassis. Right. Yeah. Specifically. Oh. Oh man. Here, Joey, if you look through the front door, you can see my big dumb face. <laughs> Sometimes it's fun when things come in just to go through the process, the, the archeology span of it, to try to understand exactly, not only what it was created for, but what the different functionality or the, the sort of gags that are built into it are, you know, and what types of shots would they have used it for based on what you're seeing on the piece itself. Oh, so now I'm looking, I can see a dimmer switch and two light bulb ports. Okay. And back here, we've got floorboards and wallpaper. So there is some interior detail. There's interior detailing. Check this yeah. out. There's yeah. wallpaper back here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It looks like it's a little bit mouse eaten. Yeah. Um, but you see the, the light bulbs ports mm -hmm. over there? And the floor is totally cut away so mm -hmm. they can get access from exactly. underneath, right? Yeah. Yeah. I assume they had to put that wallpaper there just in case they caught through the window. I guess, yeah. I love the screen porch too. Mm-hmm. That is awesome. Dude, it's creepy. 
like the thing is, is that the volumes of the interior are reminding me of the movie because they're the correct volumes and it's creeping <laughs> me out. <laughs> the asymmetrical door here, right? Well, that's, uh, do I understand? I'm, I remember reading that in the film, the sets were built with like the lines not perfectly parallel just so you felt weird looking just to, at it. Just to throw you off. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. What a masterpiece. Dude, this is great. What a, uh, I'm curious about how you guys would consider um, uh, making this sort of more permanent, would you guys build a base for this? Or? Probably, yeah. I think especially because uh, the model itself may not have total structural integrity. So I think if yeah. you can get it onto a nice base that then serves as like a handling board, I think that's good. Because, you know, when we just took it out of the crate now, obviously we're very gentle with it, but you do wonder how stable the whole thing is. And w that's one of the things that we try to do in general is when we get access to a piece, you want to set it up in such a way that it can be safely yeah. handled, looked at, examined. Right. And it's not always just about putting it on permanent display. Something like this, you're going to need a big environment to display it in. Yeah. So sometimes it's like, how can we sort of make this transportable? And sometimes it starts with a crate. It's like, this needs mm -hmm. a crate. And, and it needs to live in its crate to make sure that it is protected. Well, and also, who, who, where is someone going to display such a thing? Is it going to be under a coffee table or are you going to hang it up on the right. wall? I could imagine any, any one of those. I think they need a cave like yours. You know? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> then you can find a space. You need a cave and then you need a space within the cave. Well, I'd be, be happy too. to display this for a while yeah, at the cave, well, Brandon. We'll, we'll let you know. We'll let you know which option is coming up then. <laughs> that is a great piece. And I love that thing that like occasionally stuff shows up and you know how rare it is because you've never seen another thing it's like the it. most fun is when we get a phone call from somebody and you can immediately tell the story's credible because we get a lot of non-credible phone calls also but when you go okay this is very credible person definitely worked on the film straight to imdb yes their name is there they've sent me a picture the picture looks right i have a good feeling about this let's get out the blu-ray let's try to screen match it that's that's the fun side of our yeah. work for sure where all that information checks out i was going to ask you how do you know someone's not credible but i don't think we want to give that away <laughs> well yeah. yeah but it does happen <laughs> i'm not, sure not, not a lot but it's a uh, 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 yeah it's a little bit of a dark side sometimes this zone as well. has been yeah, yeah i know especially with those early star trek props there's been a couple of forgers that mm -hmm. messed up the whole thing yes yeah <laughs> it's it's a, it's it can be a bit messy and you know that's why we always take a lot of pride in the the authenticity in the the vetting that we do of our content, the research that we do, and ultimately the COA that we ish, issue with everything, yeah. and the fact that that COA means something. Yeah, it's a great piece. Wow, uh, it's really exciting to see it up close and in person. Do you ever? How much? How many times do you get to actually uh, get a director or actor from a production to see one of these pieces up close? It's somewhat rare, to be honest. I mean, yeah. where it happens the most is at events like Comic-Con, which obviously sure. we haven't done for a while at the moment. But Comic-Con, you would get people coming by. You get a lot of crew folks, people like yourself, who yeah. go, I worked on that, I worked on that. But every now and then you would get an actor who would come in and look at some things. And sometimes they're excited and sometimes they're not. It's just, you know, I mean, what's your experience with that? Do they care? Yeah, you know, it, dep it depends on the actor and the movie. Mm -hmm. I asked Gary Oldman, um, do you still like putting on costume? Because you've worn so many of my favorite costumes. And he said, you know, shoot, you know, it puts me in character, but after 30, 40 years, the bloom gets off the rose of putting mm -hmm. on an elaborate mm -hmm. costume every morning. Yeah, they've uh, done it. Yeah. At the same time, I'm sure Russell Crowe keeps all of his costumes because there's so much character built into every one of them, and he has an affection for that. Yeah, feels, I mean... I guess it's something of a personality thing, but if I was in that position, absolutely I'd want it, you know? There's a shot from, uh, there's a behind the scenes shot from 310 to Yuma in which Ben Foster is talking mm -hmm. about wearing that great outfit of his, that white leather, mm -hmm. dirty, weird gunslinger costume. And he's like, I am in heaven. Yeah, <laughs> and great like, character. He's such he's a great, a great character. character in that movie. Terrifying. Yeah, good movie too. Yeah, wonderful film. Brandon, thank you so much, man. This is the best dollhouse I've ever seen. Hey, always good to see you and happy to pull out some treasures when you come, come on by. Dude, all right. See you guys next time.